Hello, third grade. Today I wanted to talk to you about the math lesson that you're gonna be doing today and tomorrow, and it's about reducing fractions. Now before I start talking about reducing fractions, I wanna back us up and review finding equivalent fractions. Now, you've been working on finding equivalent fractions for quite some time, and if you remember, when we find equivalent fractions, we're trying to take a smaller fraction and multiply it by a number, a fraction that's equal to one, in order to get a larger fraction. So an example of this is if I took the fraction one half and I wanted to make it larger, so I multiply by a fraction that's equal to one, so we'll go with two halves. So I multiply it out, so I take one times two to get, that's right, two, and two times two to get four, and after multiplying this out, I find that two-fourths is the same amount as one-half. These are equivalent fractions. What you guys are going to be doing today now is reducing fractions. So we're going to take these larger fractions that we've made, and instead of multiplying, we're going to divide to make them smaller. So you're going to be doing the exact opposite of what you've been doing with when we find equivalent fractions, we multiply. Now to reduce fractions, we're going to divide, and these are opposites. So it would be like I took this 2 fourths, and I divide it by a fraction equal to 1. So we're going to go with 2 halves. So I divide it. 2 divided by 2 equals, that's right, 1. And 4 divided by 2 equals, that's right, 2. So I've got my 2 fourths is equal to my 1 half. And what we did is we just reduced this fraction 2 fourths or made it smaller to get the fraction 1 half. The reason why we reduce fractions is in order to work with them easier. It's much easier to work with fractions that are one half or one third or one fourth than it is to work with fractions like four eighths or six twelfths or nine eighteenths. Those are a whole lot harder to add or subtract, but when you're working with one half or one third or one fourth, it's much easier to add or subtract. So now let's look at exactly how we determine how to reduce a fraction. Well, in order to reduce a fraction, we have to divide by a fraction that's equivalent to one. So we're still working with our equivalent to one whole fractions. That hasn't changed. But what we need to determine now is what fraction we want to go with here. Do we want two halves? Do we want three thirds? Do we want four fourths or five fifths? We need to decide that. And the way we decide that is we look at our numerator and our denominator and find the largest possible number that can divide both of them. So let's take a look at what I have over here. I've got the fraction 4 eighths and I want to reduce this fraction down as much as I possibly can. And I've got two options. I can either do 2 halves or 4 fourths to divide it by. I need to decide which one of these is my best option. So what I want is my largest number. So I'm going to start with this 4 fourths. Can I divide 4 by 4? Yes, I can. I would get 1. Can I divide 8 by 4? Again, yes, I could. I would get 2. 4 is my best option to pick here. Now, can I divide the numerator and the denominator by 2? Can I take 4 and divide it by 2? Yes. Can I take 8 and divide it by 2? Yes, I can do, do, do it by two halves, but four fourths is going to give me my smallest possible answer. So I want to circle my four, four, my four fourths. Let's look at my next one here. I've got six twelfths. I've got two, three, and six. Once again, let's start looking at our largest number option here, six. Can I divide six by six? Yes, I can. Can I divide 12 by six? Yes, I can. So six is probably gonna be my correct answer. Can I divide six by two? Yes. How about 12 by two? Again, yes. But six is larger than two, so I wanna go with my six versus my two. How about my three? Can I take six and divide it by three? Yes. Can I take 12 and divide it by three? 
Again, yes. But once again, my six is larger than two or three. And I want, when I reduce fractions, to go with my largest possible number. So I want to circle my six here. How about my last one here? Ten twelfths. Let's start with our larger of the two numbers, three. Can ten be divided by three evenly with no remainder? It can't. Can 12 be divided by 3 evenly with no remainder? Yes, 12 can. But when I reduce fractions, remember, the numerator and the denominator that I divide by have to be equal to 1. So it has to be the same number on the top and bottom. And I can't divide 10 by 3. So 3 doesn't work. Does 2 work for 10? Can 10 be divided evenly by 2? Yes, it can. Can 12 be divided evenly by 2? Again, yes. So for my 10 twelfths, 2 is the option I want to go with because 2 halves can evenly divide 10 and 12. 3 thirds can evenly divide 12 but cannot evenly divide 10. So now let's look at another version of this. Here we had options and we had to pick the best possible option. For these three, we're going to write out all the options that we can think of that would possibly work. So I need to move a couple things out of my way, do a little bit of erasing to make some space. So we've got 8 twelfths, and we need to decide what are all my options that I could divide 8 twelfths by, and then which is my best option. And the best way to do this is just to start counting from 1 up to whatever my numerator is, which in this case is 8. So can I divide 8 twelfths by 1 over 1, 1 one -th? Yes. But is that our best possible option? Have we ever tried making equivalent fractions with 1 over 1? No, because it stays the same when we multiply or divide by 1. So that's not one we want to go with. So let's start with 2. Can I divide by 2 halves? 8 divided by 2 and 12 divided by 2? Yes, I can. So 2 is one of my options. Can I divide by 3 thirds? 8 divided by 3? No, I can't do that one evenly without having a remainder. 12 divided by 3 works, but remember, we need both the numerator and the denominator to be able to evenly be divided by it. So 3, 3 doesn't work. What about 4 fourths? Hmm. 8 divided by 4, that works. 8 divided by 12, that works. 4 is an option, so we'll leave 4 up there just like we left 2. How about 5 fifths? This one automatically, I can see, doesn't work because neither 8 or 12 can be evenly divided by 5. So that one, 5 fifths, no. What about 6 sixths? No, this one doesn't work either. 12 can be evenly divided by 6 but eight cannot be evenly divided by six. So this one does not work. What about seven sevenths? No, that one doesn't work either. Neither eight nor 12 can be evenly divided by seven without getting a remainder. Last one to try is eight eighths. Now, eight can be divided by eight evenly. We get one, but can 12 be divided evenly by eight? No. So for my fraction, 8 twelfths, I only have two options, either 2 halves or 4 fourths. And which one do I want to go with? Remember, it's the largest number I want. That's right, I want 4 fourths. That's my best option here is 4 fourths for 8 twelfths. When I divide this out, when I reduce this fraction, 8 divided by 4 equals, that's right, 2. And 12 divided by 4 equals, that's right, 3. 2 thirds is a reduced fraction form of 8 twelfths. Let's look at 9 eighteenths. Now, when I did 8 twelfths, I went through every single number going up to 9. Let's start and work our way back up to 8 for this one. Let's start here and work our way backwards from 9 counting down. So, can... 9 ninths evenly divide out 9 eighteenths. Can 9 be divided by 9? Yes. Can 18 be divided by 9? Yes, it can. So 9 
is an option. Let's think of any other options. Can eight go into nine evenly? No. How about seven? Can seven, can nine be divided by seven evenly? No. How about six? Can nine be divided by six evenly? No. How about five? Can nine be divided by five evenly? Again, no. Can four be divided by nine evenly? Or nine be divided by four evenly? No. What about three? Can nine be divided by three evenly? Yes, three can be divided by nine. What about 18? Can 18 be divided by three evenly? Yes, it can. Three is another one of our options. So we've got nine and three. The only other number left is two. Can nine be divided by two evenly? No, it can't. The reason why I focused on my numerator up there is because if a number can't divide my numerator evenly, then there's no point in keeping that number because even if it can divide the denominator evenly, we need both the numerator and the denominator to be evenly divided by it. So of my two options, nine and three, which one do I wanna keep? That's right, I wanna keep my nine. So nine eighteenths reduced down, nine divided by nine equals, that's right, one. 18 divided by nine equals, that's right, two. So 9 eighteenths, when we reduce it or divide, equals 1 half. All right, we've got one left, 6 eighteenths. So let's see what we can come up with. 6. Can we di divide 6 by 6 evenly? That's right, we can. Can we divide 18 by 6 evenly? Yes, we can. So 6 is one of our options. What about 5? Can 6 be divided by 5 evenly? No. How about four? Can six be divided by four evenly? No. What about three? Can six be divided by three evenly? That's right, it can. Now here's a check. Can 18 be divided by three evenly? That's right, it can. So three is another one of our options. We've only got one option left, and that's two. Can six be divided by two evenly with no remainder? That's right, it can. Now here's our big check. Can 18 be divided by three, by two, sorry, two evenly with no remainder? That's right, it can. So two is another one of our options. We've got three options here, six, three, and two. And remember, we wanna pick the, that's right, the largest of those options, which is six. So if we reduce this fraction, 18, six eighteenths divided by six, six, Six divided by six equals, that's right, one. And 18 divided by six equals, that's right, three. Six eighteenths is equal to one third. One third is the reduced fraction of six eighteenths. And it's much easier for us to work with one third or one half or even two thirds than it is to work with numbers like eight twelfths or nine eighteenths or six eighteenths. Hopefully this will help you as you work on reducing fractions today and tomorrow.